we never comment upon our, our special forces and you have to understand that to do so would potentially compromise any operational security so we never comment under any circumstances. Whether the Libyan authorities require any stabilization force is a matter for them. If they do, that will be mediated through the United Nations. I think that that primarily has to be from the Arab countries, from the African Union countries. We don't want this to appear as a Western interference in the uh, affairs of Libya, and therefore there's no question of British boots on the ground. Well, the priority is to stop the remnants of the regime from continuing to attack. Uh, the rest of the population. NATO last night was more active than we have been in recent nights in terms of attacking targets uh, across uh, Libya where they may be continuing to provide command and control for the regime. NATO is of course continuing to provide intelligence and reconnaissance assets in the hunt for Gaddafi and the other remnants of the regime and we'll continue to do so and I think we have to keep a sense of perspective. There's been an understandable euphoria about the effective overthrow of the regime but this was a very brutal and well supplied regime which is likely to have pockets of resistance continuing for some days yet. Well there are very large amounts of, of Libyan assets frozen. The Libyan Authority will need money, will need capital to help rebuild their country. At the moment that is being held up primarily by South Africa and I hope that we're able to persuade the South African government that they should join the Libyan people in the choice that they have made against the regime of Gaddafi. The South African government says it doesn't want to take sides, but I think they might want to remember that they asked the international community to take a side against apartheid. It's clear which side the Libyan people have chosen, and I hope now that the South African government will recognize that.